Spirit Life Church. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. This is a great day because the Lord is on our side. I'm so happy to be able to visit with you for just a few moments. I would much rather be with you in person, but for the time being, we must meet and gather in this manner. And I'm so thankful that so many of you have been gathering with us, not only on the weekends during online church, <clears throat> but also during the daily uh, devotions and encouragements that are coming forth. So thank you for your faithfulness. Thank, thank you for continuing to support the church financially. It's interesting to me, you've been giving online. We have people coming by the church trying to drop it off. We've ha even had people coming to my house and putting it in the mailbox and saying, would you take this to the church for me? So thank you for your faithfulness. I know that you love the Lord and I know that you love your local church. And I just wanted to take just a moment and thank you for all that you're doing. We've had teams out this week, some who have been writing cards, some who have been making phone calls. Uh, we've had our Dare to Care open this week and giving food to the hungry. Uh, we have some that are out running uh, errands for older uh, saints that can't get out and about. And, and we've just, the church has just energized itself around all of this and is refusing to sit silent and sit still, but is doing everything that they can within their power and still being law-abiding citizens and staying at a safe distance. But our church has been going after it this past week. Someone asked me how I was doing. I said, I'm doing great, but I'm busier than I have been in a very long time. I'd much rather just enter into the sanctuary and preach, but there's a lot that goes in uh, to these online services. But God is helping us. And he is helping us to reach people that we would have never been able to reach before. So even in the midst of the storm, God uh, is giving us victory. So thank you for being with me today. Uh, I want to share with you a brief passage of scripture, um, I, a message that the Lord put on my heart a few days ago. Uh, actually, it's found in Jeremiah chapter 32. And because of the length of the, the story and the passage, I'm going to ask you to read the entire chapter chapter 32 in the book of Jeremiah, later with your family there in your homes. But for the sake of time, I'm going to summarize this passage of Scripture and then give you some thoughts that come directly from it. First of all, you know who Jeremiah is. He was one of the major prophets of the Old Testament. Uh, he spoke on behalf of the Lord. In this particular instance, he had made the king mad uh, because he was prophesying against it, the nation of Israel because of their sins and because they had forgotten the source of their hope, which was God. And so Zedekiah the king arrested him and put him in the king's prison. And from there, Zedekiah thought that he would be silenced, but Jeremiah continued to raise his voice and share what the Lord was doing and speaking to the nation. And so here we have Jeremiah, he's in the prison, and he's seeking the Lord, and the Lord says something to him that we need to take note of today. <clears throat> and the first is this, the Lord spoke to him and said, there is going to be pain in the land for a period of time. Now, it's not like what we're going through right now. It's a little different because they were actually under physical attack. The Chaldeans had come in, they had attacked them physically. They had taken over their land. They had taken their crops. They had taken their houses. They had taken their city. They had taken the community. And here the nation of Judah was sitting in an environment where they couldn't get out and about. Everything that they'd worked hard for that was being taken from them by this enemy. And uh, there was no end in sight yet. 
God was doing a work, but it was not seen yet. But God began to speak to Jeremiah and share with him what he was going to need to do. So first of all, they had to realize that this is a painful experience. It's a painful time in our history. It's something that we're going to have to go through, but God is going to move us out of our pain and into our victory. Sounds a lot like our world today, doesn't it? There's a lot of pain in the world. You know, everything that we hear all day, every day, is about this pandemic that has taken the world over. We hear just about every day from the President of the United States. We hear every day at 5 p.m. from our Governor, Andy Bashir. We hear just about every day from uh, Mayor Fisher here in Louisville. I mean, we're hearing this on an ongoing, regular basis. And so it is something that we have to go through for this time and in this season, but it's something that God's going to bring us through. Now, Judah was going through a very different situation, as I've already said. Theirs was the loss of their nation, the loss of their freedom, the loss of their land, the loss of their homes. It, w it had been taken from them, and what they once possessed, they no longer possessed because of the enemy that had come against them. So there is a very real pain that they were dealing with just as there's a very real pain that we're dealing with today. But in the midst of the pain, God spoke to Jeremiah and he told him to do something that was very strange. He told him, he said, I want you to buy a piece of land. He said, your cousin Hannibal is going to come and he's going to offer you his land at a price. And he said, I want you to purchase that piece of property. And he said, I want you to do it according to the laws of the land. He said, I want you to get the deeds drawn up legally. I want you to go before the witnesses so that they can sign that they witness this transaction. He said, and then I want you to take the legal documents and the paperwork and put it in a, um, in a pot so that it can be preserved for a long time, the scripture says. In other words, it's going to be needed at a time in the future, even though it's not needed now. And I want you to know where it is. I want it to be protected. I want it to be pre preserved. But here's what I want you to see. What God was asking Jeremiah to do was to be proactive in possessing something that had not yet come but would come in the future. He wanted him to do something that made no human sense. Now remember, I'd already told you that all the land was under the control of the Chaldeans. All the land was in the hands of the enemy, but God spoke to Jeremiah and he said, I want you to buy Hannibal's land and possess it. You may not be able to go there today. You may not be able to set your feet on the ground today. You may not be able to use it today, but I want you to have it deeded to yourself and I want that deed done legally so that when the day comes for you to be able to use that, it will be there and I want also to be able to show my people that this is not going to be something that lasts forever. And in the future, there's going to be a move of my hand in their lives, and I'm going to do something that they don't even know at this point what it is. Hey, listen, God wants us in this season of waiting, in this season of imprisonment, if you will, he wants us to prepare to receive something that he's going to bring into our hands in the future. He wants us to be proactive. He doesn't want us to just sit around and say, well, I hope this all works out. No, God wants us to start doing today what will bring victory to our lives in the future. God wants us to speak faith now. God wants us to make moves now, financial moves now, that will bless us in the future. God wants us to put our eyes upon him and expect that this isn't going to last forever. And when it does break, and when this pandemic is over, that we're going to have everything that we need to not only survive, but to thrive in life because we have done now what needed to be done to set the stage for what will eventually happen. Be proactive. Be people of faith right now. Be people of prayer right now. 
be people right now who are speaking forth the testimonies of God and the blessings of God. You don't know who might be listening to you right now. You don't know if there might be someone out there who needs to give their life to Jesus Christ and they're looking to you and they're listening to your words. Be proactive. Say what needs to be said. Be people of faith. Refuse to give in to the hardship. Refuse to let the enemy steal your praise. Refuse to allow your voice to be silent. Plant the seed to Today. Plant the word of faith today because I'm telling you there is going to come a time when this all breaks and God is going to take the seed that we're planting now and he is going to bring fruit into our lives and fruit into our church. I don't know. I, you know, I know you're in your living room right now and I'm here in my office, but I just feel like we ought to pause for a moment and say, praise God ye the Lord. Amen. He is good, and I'm expecting good things from his hand. He wanted him to have the deed to the land. He wanted him to buy a piece of land even though he was currently in prison. He wanted him to buy a piece of land that was being held by the enemy so that when the enemy was defeated, it would be, de it would be deeded to him and he would be able to use it to upbuild the kingdom of God. Isn't that good news? Be proactive today. Begin planting seed today because this will break. This will pass in the very near future. We're going to only talk about the pandemic as something that happened yesterday, of something that happened last year, of something that happened before, and we're going to find ourselves standing in the realm of divine and eternal blessings. Amen. I'm thankful for that. So be proactive and possessing what God wants you to possess in the future. Take it by faith now. Pull it into your spirit now. You need vision. You need to be able to look for, for, at something with hope in your, in your spirit. You need to hope for what God has. You need to expect what God is going to do in our lives. So, first of all, God revealed to Jeremiah that there would be pain that there would be some suffering in the world for a period of time. But then he explained to him that he wanted him to be proactive in possessing now what would be fully realized in the future. But there's another thing. And you have to go to Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, as God begins to conclude this thing with Jeremiah. Now, this is a very familiar passage of Scripture, but it really is an encouragement to pray. Now, we pray in response to what the Word of God tells us to pray. We don't just pray randomly, but we get the promise of God, and then we pray the promise of God. Now, God had promised Jeremiah that there was a, that there was a blessing coming to Judah in the future, but he needed to possess it now. Now, here's the promise that God gave him. It's found in chapter 32, verse 14. And it says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Take these deeds, both the sealed deed of purchase and this open deed, and put them in an earthenware vessel, so that they may last a very long time. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Houses and fields and vineyards shall again be bought on this land. <laughs> Praise the Lord and hallelujah. He said, you need this deed. It needs to be protected because I'm about to do something and release something into your world that you can't see yet. You don't know yet. But it's going to come to you through prayer. It's going to come to you as you call upon my name. I've already made the provision for you. This is not going to be a long-term situation. This is not going to keep you down. But instead, I want you to prepare yourselves because I am promising you that the very land that is outside of your possession right now, I'm going to bring it back into your possession. You are going to buy land in this very place. You are going to build houses in this very house, in this very place. You're going to plant crops in this very place, and I'm going to bless it by my hand. Thus saith the Lord. Listen, our church is not on standby right now. 
As I have already mentioned to you, our church has been on fire this week. We are not being silenced. We are helping. We are preaching. We are praying. We are testifying. We are doing everything in our power during this difficult season to let people know that Jesus Christ is alive and well. He's coming again soon. It won't be long that we are going to experience the blessings of eternity as he comes back for his people. But in the meantime, he's going to bless us abundantly. I, I don't know. It just seems like to me that when we do uh, have the ability to gather again, it's going to absolutely be amazing. As we realize that even though we're able to gather now, we're able to do things that will reach our community in a more effective way than ever before. We've not been silenced. We've just been prepared for the future. Amen? Amen. And I'm excited about what God is going to do in your life. And I'm excited about what God is going to do through the local church that we know is Spirit Life Church of God. God is going to do something that will affect this area through us. And I'm excited. I already, I've already paid the price in prayer. I've already taken the deed into my possession. I have it tucked away in the earthenware vessel. I'm ready to pull it out and use it for the glory of God whenever the time is right, aren't you? Amen. He's going to use us. Now, this idea of prayer is uh, something that unlocks what God has already planned to do. Look at Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. God spoke to Jeremiah and he said, he said, call unto me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Hallelujah. I will do great and mighty things which you do not know. What it means literally is that there are things in the spirit realm that have been locked up by the enemy. We are not aware of them yet because we can't touch them. We cannot possess them yet. But what God is saying to Jeremiah is, is that as you call upon me, I'm going to begin releasing things to you that you are not even aware of. They've been locked up in the spirit realm. There's been spiritual warfare done over these things. But as you call upon my name, I'm going to begin to release them to you in ways that you can't even imagine right now. It's already there. It's prepared for you. It is, it is set aside with your name on it. And as you call upon my name, I will answer and I will cast out upon you things that you can't even imagine right now. I'm excited about that possibility. I'm excited about that reality. As I was thinking about that, this week, the Lord spoke these words to me. He said, he said, I am releasing in the spirit what the enemy has locked up in the natural. Oh, let me say it again. He said, I am releasing in the spirit what the enemy has locked up in the natural. Just like old King Zedekiah had locked up Jeremiah and it appeared that his voice was silenced. God said there will be no imprisonment for my man who will speak on my behalf. He may be in a prison, but I'm going to give him the opportunity to speak with power and authority and do things even in this time of confinement that will reach into the days ahead and will unlock blessings from my heavenlies into the people that he is speaking to. I'm telling you, just like he did it for Jeremiah, just like he enabled Jeremiah to be able to speak forth and produce blessings for the future, he is going to bless you in such a way if you'll pay the price in prayer now, if you will sow the seed right now, I'm telling you there will come a time when the blessings of God will be poured out upon you in a way that you will not be able to contain. I'm excited about that. I am ready for that. And so as I was thinking about this time of prayer, I thought about three questions that I might ask myself. And the first one is this. What am I expressing? Listen, I don't want to be expressing doubt in this time. I don't want to be expressing unbelief in this time. 
I don't want to be going around so that everybody sees me as though I'm down and out and discouraged and frustrated and, 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 and I'm depressed and I'm unable to be more than a conqueror through Christ. I, I don't want to express that. I don't want to, get to give anyone the idea that I feel defeated in any way. The enemy of my soul cannot defeat me because God is on my side. And if God be for me, who can be against me? I'm telling you, I don't want to express negative. I don't want to express doubt. I don't want to express fear. I want to express faith. I want the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be acceptable in his sight. What are you expressing? Secondly, I want to ask you and I'd ask myself, what am I expecting? Listen, God has made promises. And if God has made promises, I want to expect the fullness of what God has promised. I don't want a halfway blessing. I don't want to say, well, God, I'm not sure that I can <clears throat> receive all of that. That seems like too much of a blessing for me. No, if God has promised me something, I want to receive it in its fullness. Jeremiah, when the Lord spoke to him and said, listen, I'm going to give you this land back. It may not be in your possession right now, but the enemy cannot prevent me from blessing my people. And I declare to you this day, saith the Lord, that there will be houses built on this land again. You will possess it again. You will plant vineyards again. My people will grow up and raise families in this place again. That is my promise to you. Who am I then to say to God, well, I can't take all that. I don't need all that. Maybe you can bless me in a different. No, if God wants to bless me that way, I'm telling you, I want to expect everything that God has in store for me. <clears throat> this week, I was speaking with someone, as many of you know, we had to shut the child care down temporarily in order to abide by the laws of Kentucky. And in so doing, we had to lay off our employees. And because we are a nonprofit, they cannot draw unemployment. <clears throat> and so I began praying. And I, I said, God, I know that it's not the law of the land. And I know that they're not supposed to be able to draw unemployment. But God, I'm praying that you will somehow change this. Even if it's a temporary change, Lord, I pray that you will help it to cause it to change so that uh, these people can be paid during this time off because they can't come to work. They're not allowed to come to work because of the mandate of the state. <clears throat> and I mentioned this to someone. They said, what are you going to do? And I said, I'm doing all that I can do. I'm praying. I'm asking God to change this. And I was told by this individual, said, well, you know, don't get your hopes up. <clears throat> and when this individual told me that, something inside of me just didn't sit well with that. And I, and I, and I said to myself, I have the ability to determine what my attitude and what my faith level will be about this situation. And I choose to believe the report of the Lord. And I believe that God is going to open a door here so that our employees can get paid. And then just a couple of days later, an edict came from our government agencies that said that they are considering the possibility of temporarily changing the unemployment uh, tax situation so that specifically, they said, people who work for churches and child care centers will be able to draw unemployment for a period of time. And I just scooted my chair back and said, praise be unto almighty God. Though someone told me don't get your hopes up and someone said don't expect that kind of blessing, I chose to believe it anyway. I still do choose to believe it. It may not be law yet and it may not have passed yet, <clears throat> but I still believe that my God shall supply all of our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I am not going to doubt and I am not going to be discouraged, but I am going to lift up my eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. I'm telling you, I'm expecting the very best in this situation. I'm expecting to overcome in every way. I'm expecting to receive back and recover everything that the enemy has taken from me and taken from you because God is in control and he is still on the throne. Amen. Praise him for just a moment. Just get up from your couch right now and begin to glorify the name of the Lord for he is worthy, he is mighty, he is an overcomer and because he is, we are. So I ask myself, what am I expressing? And I ask myself, what am I expecting? 
<clears throat> and then finally, as I begin to close, I ask myself, what am I experiencing? What am I experiencing? Can I look at my life and say, oh, that's, that's the blessing of God right there. Can I look at my wife and my, sp my spouse and say, oh, she's a blessing from the Lord to me. Can I be grateful for my job? Some of you are still working, and I've noticed that you've posted online. I'm grateful that I can still work. What are you experiencing? Are you healthy in your body? Give praise for healing. Do you have finances? Do you have food on your table? Are your bills paid? Are you expecting God to do something on your behalf in these areas of your life? What are you experiencing? <clears throat> because if I'm not experiencing something that God has promised, I want to find out what the problem is so that I can fix the problem and begin to experience all that God has for me. So what I'm saying to you today is that God is going to prepare and is preparing a place of abundant blessing for us if we'll sow the seed right now. Just like Jeremiah had to go buy a field when it made no sense at all. He was in prison. There was no, there was no use for that because it was in the enemy's hand. But what God wanted to do was get him ready for blessing and to send a strong message to his people that I am preparing a blessing for you that I am going to pour out in great abundance. And church, I want to say to you today, I know life might be difficult. Life might be hard right now. Life might not be what you had anticipated. But I want you to sow the seed this week. Sow the seed in prayer. Sow the seed of finance. Sow the seed of joy. Sow the seed of righteousness. Sow the seed of faith. Sow the seed so that it can be in the ground uh, so that when all of this passes and the enemy has been defeated, that you will have a crop of fruitfulness that will be there waiting for you when we come through it all. Let's pray. Father, thank you. I, I feel this so strongly in my spirit, God, that you are setting us up for a blessing, that you are setting us up right now for things that we can't even imagine, things that may be on lockdown right now because of the enemy, things that may not be released and loosed into our lives right now. But God, what you have in store for us cannot be locked down forever. It cannot be held by the enemy. It has to be let go. He has to set it free so that we can have it in our lives. And so, Father, right now, I come to you and I ask you to build the faith of your people and encourage them and inspire them to put the seed in the ground so that they will realize the fruit of their labor and the blessing of your hand. Father, I give you praise now for I have asked these things in your glorious name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Redemption has a name, and it's Jesus. that we have and we'll say you know what I want this year to be a year of peace I want this year to be a year of hope I want this year to be a year of victory but I want to remind us what the word of God says it says in 2 Corinthians for it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ see it's good for us to desire good gifts from God but we have to remember that Jesus is the gift. He is our victory. He is our peace. He is our blessed hope. And so may we not just look to the gifts that we desire for him, but let us look into the face of Jesus Christ in every single thing that we do. Because we know as we behold the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, we shall be transformed from one degree of glory to another. Aren't you grateful that he transforms us into his image from glory to glory to glory to glory? Lord, we praise you today. And we thank you, God, for your word. Lord, we thank you that you are the word. We thank you, Lord, that you are our victory. You are our hope. You are our peace. You are our redemption, Lord. And Lord, may we not only desire the good gifts that you want to give us graciously, but Lord, may we desire you most of all. And as we see and behold that you are the way, the truth, and the life, we will see those things begin to manifest in our lives in this year. Lord, we do desire miracles, Lord God, and we thank you for them, Father. We praise your holy name together. In the mighty name of Jesus, we agree. Amen. Amen. Hello. We're going to observe communion together. It will feel a little different from normal because we usually do this when we gather together. Although circumstances mean that we cannot be together physically, we're still gathering today in spirit. When Jesus shared his last supper with the disciples, he used what they had at hand unleavened bread and wine because they were observing the Jewish festival of Passover. Today, many churches continue to use similar elements when observing communion as a way of copying what Jesus did. But there's nothing special about the elements themselves. The importance of communion lies in what it signifies. It is a remembrance of the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, how his body was broken and his blood shed for us. It also reminds us that we are one body. It is something we do when we gather in His name. And when we observe communion, we're joining with millions of other Christians around the world who are doing the same. Today, I will be partaking of communion with a peanut butter cracker and some apple juice. It's what I had at hand. And whatever you've been able to find for yourself and your family will be fine as well. The importance is that we do this together. Let's get ready. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. Take the bread.
And in the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this remember to remember me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you today. We thank you that through the wonders of the technology, even though we cannot be together physically, we can join together. We can come together and to worship you. Lord, we thank you for the many ways you've blessed us. We thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. And Lord God, as we face the uncertainties of our current situation, Lord, we thank you that we can rely on you and on your Holy Spirit. Lord, we continue to pray for our city and for our country and for this world, Lord, as we are affected by the, this virus. Lord, I pray that you would just touch the bodies of those who are dealing with this illness. And Lord, I pray that you would just give uh, a, 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 an extra blessing of grace to those who are working so hard to help those who are sick. Lord God, I pray that you would calm the anxieties and the fears that have arisen because of this, the uncertainty when it comes to jobs and income and where's our next paycheck going to come from. Lord, we don't have to worry about any of those things because we can rely on you. Lord, we thank you for all that you do for us. And Lord, we hold on and we will proclaim your death until you do return again to gather us together. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all and have a great week.